Arizona and just wanted to go over what I'm going to be doing tomorrow basically. Pretty much everything's packed up, charged, ready to go. I'll finish packing tonight. Here's what we're doing tomorrow. So this is the Butler California BDR map, but this is where I am. I'm going to follow it up here. Goes to dirt almost immediately all along here. I gotta worry about this section, which is basically Pikachu Pass or Pikachu Wash because it's all deep sand. And then I come up along here and I'm actually going to be camping right about here where this intersection is because otherwise I dip straight into Blythe. I'm camping, so I don't wanna go into town. Uh, it's only about 120 miles, but it's going to be some of the deepest sand in the trip. My bike's definitely a little bit heavy, just given, you know, all my stuff that I need to live. So I'm gonna set off nice and early and see how long it takes me. Take my time, enjoy the ride, get some good video, and we'll see what happens. I am taking water with the anticipation that it might be a dry camp, but we'll see. I don't know. I kind of hope it's not, but if it is, I'll have enough water to not have to worry about it. I will show you what I end up doing tomorrow at the end of the day, and then show you what I'm planning on doing the next day, and we'll just work our way north, basically. Here at S3 Power Sports, just grabbed a front tube because I realized I didn't have a spare tube with me because they had put in my tubes when they swapped the tires. Already topped off on gas, and we're gonna go start the California BDR. This is probably the heaviest my bike is gonna be this trip because I'm carrying water and I'm full of fuel, but that's all right. It's weird, I was kind of thinking about it this morning. I don't quite feel like I'm on a trip yet. I don't have the feeling of like being on vacation when I was doing the CDT, you know, I had the feeling of like I'm being on this kind of big adventure and I kind of just don't have that yet and I'm not sure why not because I am, <laughs> you know, I'm in Yuma, Arizona, I'm a thousand miles from Colorado and everything I own and care about is basically on this bike right now so i don't know maybe it's gonna take like a, a week or so or take you know getting out onto the off road like i don't know what it's gonna take before i actually feel like i'm on an adventure or a trip i just don't quite understand why not i'm just navigating over to the start of the bdr right now so i'm probably gonna turn the cameras off here in a minute and then i will restart them once i'm actually on the bdr a few inches later as soon as i make this right turn i will be on the california bdr route if you're wondering why i'm wearing a jersey it's because it's going to be in the 90s this week so my jacket's on my tail bag i've got my armor on i just a jersey made so much more sense for this all right here's official downtown yuma had dinner there last night it was quite good overall you know enjoyed the stay in yuma it's a little run down in places i'm sure it's got some problems but it's a neat little town you know not gonna fly the drone marine corps air station yuma is here in town and so the drone flight prohibition pretty much covers the entire town their airport is like directly over my right shoulder back over here I love bridges. They're so cool. The goals for today, well, the goals for the entire trip, don't get lost, don't get hurt, and don't fall on a cactus. <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. <laughs> so yeah, doing the math with all of my luggage and everything and the water and all that stuff that I'm carrying right now, basically my bike 
weighs as much as an unladen GSA. If you were riding the BDR clean on a GSA, it would be about like this. I will also stop and drop tire pressures once I hit dirt. I just don't know when that's gonna be exactly, so. Oh, it's um, cilantro. I can smell it. <laughs> I'm not a fan of cilantro. I'm one of those people that genetically it, it tastes like uh, soap to me, but I can still enjoy the smell, you know? It's only 66 right now. It feels amazing. It's supposed to be, I want to say Wednesday or Thursday. Today's Monday. It's supposed to start hitting 100. Oh, here's dirt. People out fishing, looks like. Yep. Curvy road, next 18 miles. That's what I want to see. And the goal is not to just be blasting through this. That's not the point. Yeah, welcome to the desert. So this route takes you through the Mojave Desert and Death Valley, which is also why it's going to be 100 plus. I'm not sure if I'm gonna see anybody else out here. I know a person started a couple of days ahead of me, but was going slow, according to him, taking up to two weeks. So I might catch him. I am not opposed to riding with other people on this trip. I'm just not necessarily expecting to. Just cruising across the desert. I don't think I'm actually in, I don't know if I'm in California yet. I just thought about that. I didn't actually see anything denoting the cross. I have to think I'm in California though. I'm sure dirt bikers just rip through here. The main problem with this kind of stuff is this is less sand and more gravel. The technique is the same. The issue is the bike moves around more and you have to be going faster to get on top of it. All right, hard right turn coming up. I think I'll stop and get a drink of water and probably lower my tire pressures there. I'm not gonna lower them a lot. I'm gonna get them to like mid 20s. Of course, one of the problems is like you're never gonna find shade out here to stop in. The hard ones are always when it looks solid <laughs> and then you ride into it and it's just mush. Yeah, now we're dropping down into the riverbed. So much like Arizona. God, that is gorgeous. The desert is just so beautiful. You know, people act like it's empty or that there's nothing there. Like, there's plenty here. It's just not green. That's the difference. But it is gorgeous. This is fun. Don't get going too fast. <laughs> You will notice I am standing a lot more on this bike than I was on the 690. Most of that has to do with the 690's weight distribution and geometry. If you watch my videos on a 690, a lot of the times I'm sitting, especially when I'm going up hills, and it's because that was the only way to get that bike to lay power down. The bike is relatively light and the weight distribution was such that trying to get it to get traction going uphill, I had to have as much weight over the rear wheel as I could. And so a lot of times it required me to sit when I otherwise should have been, you know, in theory standing. And on this bike, that's not nearly as much of a problem. And so I'm able to stand on this bike in a lot more areas where it just makes sense. But yeah, the amount of grief that I got from my videos on on that bike where they're like you need to be standing up i don't know why you're sitting that's why you're having so many problems Marr. and it had nothing to do with anything other than the fact that i needed to be able to get traction and the only way to get traction on that bike because it is basically just a big dirt bike was to sit sometimes you know if you watch guys doing enduros and stuff on 250s and 350s and even 500s and stuff they're sitting a lot especially going uphill because that's the only way they can get the bike to lay power down all right i'm gonna get the drone out don't fall over please that gives you an idea how soft this is <laughs> all right what's nice is i can just ride now i don't have to worry about is it keeping up did it fly into a tree 
it just tracks and it'll do 40 something it keeping up isn't really a problem and the batteries charge off of USB-C so I don't have to worry about recharging batteries when they're dead keep an eye on is is it still with me and what's the battery life look like the only time I've had it lose me was when I was accidentally pressed the pause button instead of a directional arrow god it is pretty back here I mean I can see why they brought the BDR through here it's gorgeous. The central and northern California BDRs are gonna be amazing. I have to think that they're gonna split it into three just because California is so big. But we'll see, I guess. Um, apparently Oregon is coming out this year. I really might try and reach out to them and be like, do you need another filmer on the Oregon route? Because I would like to take part if I could. Yeah, here's the sand. All right, Droney's still with me, and I'm turning. Oh, God. Nope, no off-road travel, just sand. <laughs> land it. Let's see, it's 10 o'clock. Yeah. Feeling pretty good, I feel like. Yeah, definitely more gravel-ish than sand. Four-wheel drive required past this point. That means it's going to get fun. I wonder if horses are considered four-wheel drive vehicles. I mean, they definitely have four-wheel drive. Get up to the top of this hill and stop for a second. Ooh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> had a big old one. I'm gonna start taking more breaks. I'm not in a rush. This is just really fun to ride through, so you kind of want to blast a little bit. It's like, well, one, it makes it easier. And I'm always one of those people of like, once I'm riding, I don't necessarily want to stop. And I have to remember to take it easy and take breaks. go over there have a snack look at the river for a little while all right let's take a break for a minute show you my neat pivot trick again on this bike it works great Ta -da. A few moments later. 92 miles or something to Blythe, so something like 70 or whatever, to my campsite. Go up to the hill, take a picture with the flag, and get moving again. All right, back on the route. Here. There we 
we go. Beautiful, God. I'm glad I took that break. Just kind of had a snack and drink of water and went to the bathroom. Chilled out for a little bit. Not in any rush. Yeah, this is more like gravel than sand. So it's really difficult to stay on top of. Oh, come on. Yeah, it's a workout. No doubt about that. Sorry if all you're hearing in the headset is heavy breathing. I'm doing the best I can. <laughs> That's really deep. Come on. <laughs> oh, come on. Yeah, this is just gravel. First drop of the trip. All right, we're gonna take some gear off before I lift this thing up. Whew. All right, first fall of the trip out of the way. fighting the handlebars. Oh. And take a break. The problem is it's really not sand. It is river rock. And it is deep. So like I was saying before about how when you're riding in gravel and it makes it way harder to get on top of it, that's this. Come on. I'm on top of them. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. God. 
I got good shade, this is gonna be a long day. I had lunch, took a nice, nice long break. Oh, this is gonna be some of the slowest off-road riding you've probably ever seen. I'm gonna do my best not to burn my clutch out, but no more high speed. It just doesn't float, and all it results in is harder crashes. <clears throat> Cause yeah, that last one was about 35. Granted, it scrubbed a lot of speed off before I actually was over, but it was not fun. Just drive straight. Now I know why so many people bypass this section especially. Potentially even the first two sections. Most tour groups I know of don't come through here. And it's because of this. Again, sand would be one thing. Sand is fine. <sighs> What's also interesting is there's no workaround for this first section. There's workarounds for other really difficult bits, but not for this. in there somewhere no not <clears throat> damn it all right here's what's going on i am caching my luggage and i'm going to try and ride out to blythe and get a truck to come back in here and grab my luggage I'm just exhausted. Like it's not heat or dehydration or anything like that. I just, I can't pick that bike up any more times with the luggage on it. If I keep doing it, I'm going to get heat exhaustion. Taking my backpack, have water, have food, have my tracker. And we're gonna try and ride out these last probably three miles. I have a note here with my gear, with what I'm doing and where I'm going. I am gonna put my phone number on it just in case. And if I see somebody along the way, I'm gonna stop them and ask if there's any chance they would help me out. It sucks, but there's no other real way to do this. I can, I can ride that bike pretty easily in the sand without the luggage on, and I'm pretty sure I can get out that way. Even somebody with a Jeep, like it really doesn't have to be anything special. It just needs to be a truck that can make it down this road and grab my luggage. So I have the GPS coordinates for where I'm at and we're gonna go do this. Let's see about getting out of here. All right. I'm just going nice and easy. No heroics. Nope, we're just taking it easy. There, we're floating finally. Not great. Yeah, I apologize if uh, you don't like what I'm about to do, but I'm pretty sure this is about to become the GoPro show. <laughs> I'll probably keep the drone, but I'm not sure how many other cameras I'm keeping. I know that I basically have 105 pounds of luggage on this bike and probably tw I think this is the exit probably 25 of that is camera gear it is 
because I remember seeing this on the videos. Just bounce back and forth a little bit. Didn't pick the greatest lines. I won't say this is going to be chill getting out of here. Yeah, rock gardens I can do. Yes, I know I'm sitting. I'm exhausted. <laughs> I wish I was in better shape before I started this, but that didn't happen. So we're just gonna crawl up this thing in first gear. Yeah, basically all of my excess camera gear that's in my tail bag is going bye-bye. Oh man, the desert is still beautiful though. So yeah, I went through three and a half liters of water before I finally took the luggage all the way off and headed out. So for the love of God, make sure you're carrying enough water on this route. Three liters per day is really not enough, especially if you get into trouble. Twelve seconds later. So, as I suspected, the sheriff's office forwarded it to BLM as a search and rescue call. Specifically, not what I asked for. Talk to the BLM guy, and his best idea was, because I'm not in physical danger, they're not going to come out here and and do anything because that's they're not for that his suggestion was there's a whole bunch of like camping and ATV spots all along here on my way to a town called Winter Haven which is south along this road and that I should try and basically stop and talk to them let them know what's going on and see if they might help me out it's about 25 minutes to Winter Haven from here I'm going to head down this way. If I see anybody camped, stop and talk to them and see if they might take me up there and grab my luggage, bring me back. Oh, motorcycles. Perfect. Hello. Oh, I have potentially an unusual question for you. <laughs> I was up here on Indian Pass Road. Hey, the no, that's what I'm following. I'm actually looking for a little bit of help. So I was following the BDR and I got up on Indian Pass Road where it follows a wash for about 10 miles and got to the point where I actually had to cash my luggage. <laughs> just, to get, just to get the bike out. I think I was on fall number five. I was like, yeah, okay, it's 90 degrees. I'm going to end up with a stroke. <laughs> and so um, I'm trying to see if anyone would be able to help me go back and get my luggage. Yeah? It's like six miles off of um, the road up here. But, yeah. Okay. And I will absolutely reimburse you for gas and time spent. <laughs> The Tenere 700. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh. Later that same evening. Just leaving here with Tom and Joe. They saved my ass. And now it's time to get to Blythe. So I got 60 miles basically. I'm just gonna blast up the road. Yeah, 68 miles. 
Oh God, all right. What a long ass day. All right, um, tomorrow on the menu is weight reduction. I am gonna drop off a bunch of stuff at the post office that I am gonna mail home because, yikes.